out and slap some oil on me and lay his hands on me and declare I'm healed uh, by his God. And, but that's not what happened. He went over to Elisha, and Elisha said, go down there and jump in the river. He said, go down there and dip seven times, and you'll be made whole. Well, the man didn't like that, the, the guy that had the leprosy, but he went ahead and did it. Then after he did it, he was made whole, and he went back to Elisha and said, Elisha, I want to pay you for what you've done for me. I want to give you all of this silver and all this gold and all these changes of clothing, all this fine clothing. I want to give you all of that for helping me. And Elisha said, absolutely not. He said, I would never take anything for what I've done for serving the Lord. He said, I would not take one penny for serving the Lord. Some of you pastors need to hear what I'm saying. Elisha said, I will not take one dime for doing what God's called me to do. Because he's freely given me the ability to do it, and I freely give it to those in need. That same thing goes over into the New Covenant. Paul told Timothy, told many of the apostles and disciples, don't preach for filthy lucre. Paul said, I've never taken money for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he said, I never will because I don't want to be bound to any man. I don't want to be bound by any. If I, if I take money from you, then I feel like I've got to preach what you want to hear. But he said, I've never taken money. And he said, Tom, he said, Timothy, don't you ever preach for filthy lucre. Don't have anything to do with it. If you don't know what lucre is, it's money. He said, don't you preach for filthy money. He said, you go out freely, you've received, now freely give it. That's what God told us. And church, this is where we need to be today. But, you know, Naaman left that day. Elisha said, I'm not going to take anything from you. So Naaman left. He took his gold and his silver and all of his clothing, and he packed it on his asses, and they they left and went down the road. Well, Gehazi is is, uh, Elisha's servant. Gehazi said, you know... That gold and silver sure could help out a poor servant. <laughs> and so he slipped out of the house. And he went down there and he tracked down Naaman. He said, Naaman, he said, uh, let me tell you what's happened since you left back there. My master sent me down here. And he said, we've got two guests coming in, two sons of the prophets that are coming to visit. And he said, e- Elijah said, it sure would be nice if we give them a talent of silver each. And a change of raiment, change of clothing when they get here. And Naaman said, well, that's not a problem. And Gehazi said, well, you know, if we just give him a talent of silver. Now, a talent of silver was a lot of silver. He said, if we can give him a talent of silver each and a change of clothing, uh, Master said that would be great. First of all, he lied because Elisha didn't send him. Secondly, there was no two people coming that we could have record of. Gehazi was just like many people. He's got dollars in his signs. He got dollar signs in his eyes. I, I'll get it right in a minute. He got his eyes on money. And when he got his eyes on money, he took it off of God. And he didn't realize what the penalty would be. But the penalty always comes. You know, sin takes you further than you want to go. Keeps you longer than you want to stay. And costs you more than you want to pay. That's what sin does. Well, Gehazi took the money, and Naaman said, not a problem. I'm going to send two servants. Each one will carry a talent of silver, and each one will carry the raiment, and they'll go back with you. And so when they got back to Elisha's house, they didn't go in the house with it. Gehazi said, let's go out here and put it in the barn. So they went out to an outer building, and they put the silver in there. He hid the silver, and he hid the clothing. And he sent the two servants on their way. They went back to Naaman. Gehazi comes in the back door. And Gehazi walks in, and Elisha says, Where you been, Gehazi? He said, I've not been, I've not been anywhere. He said, Don't you think that my spirit was with you when you went to see Naaman? You see, a man of God, when God, the Holy Ghost, and this is what so many people don't understand, the Holy Ghost is watching. And the Holy Ghost talks to the men of God. He lets us know what's going on on Facebook. He lets us know. He'll always let us know what's being said by the congregation. I could sit here and I could bring out some of you and embarrass you so much because I know what you've said. I know what you've done. The little birdies just fly around and around spreading it. 
You can't get on Facebook and say anything about the pastor of the church that doesn't come back to me. So I already know. Doesn't make any difference to me because I don't care anymore. Doesn't make any difference to me. But Gehazi talked to the man of God, tried to lie to him. Said, I ain't been nowhere. He said, don't you think that I wasn't with you, my spirit wasn't with you when you went down there to talk to Naaman? And he said, I'm going to tell you this, because you've lied to Naaman and because you've lied to me and you've done what you've done, the leprosy that Naaman had when he come to me, the leprosy that he had before I sent him down to the river is now going to be on you and your children and your children's children forever. Every child born down the road in your household is going to be a leper. He said, that's the price you're going to have to pay. And church, that's a price that, nay, that uh, Gehazi didn't want to pay. It's bad enough to sin and have the penalty fall on yourself. But think that you sin and have the penalty go on your children and your children's children and your great-grandchildren and your great-great-grandchildren forever. You say, well, God would never do that now. Read Malachi 3 and 6. What does he say? He says, I am the Lord. I change not. The same God that you're in here worshiping today is the same God that did that. Now, yes, we have grace and mercy through Jesus Christ, but God is still God. And this, this is what so many people fail to realize. They fail to recognize. They fail to understand that God is still God today. He's the God of all gods. Then we jump over to 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 24. And it came to pass after this that Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all his host and went up to Bashish, uh, Samaria. And that's not exactly where I want to be. Let's go over to 2 Kings chapter 8. 2 Kings chapter 8, because what I want to show you is what, how God is a God of mercy and a God of grace. In chapter 8, Elisha, then spake Elisha unto the woman whose son had, he had restored the, to life, saying, Arise and go thou and thine household, and sojourn wherever, wheresoever thou canst sojourn. For the Lord hath called for a famine, and it shall also come upon the land seven years. This same Elisha, since he healed Naaman, has also gone to the widow, Heal the widow's son, but now he's telling the widow that God is sending a famine upon the land. He didn't say the devil is sending a famine upon the land. He said God is sending a famine upon the land. Why? Because God wants to get the people's attention. I preached in here last Sunday that there's a famine in the land right now. People are wanting to hear the truth, but praise God, they can't find it. They're hungry for the true word of God. Their souls are starving for the true word of God. But we don't have the men of God that will stand with the backbone and tell them that sin is sin, right's right, and wrong's wrong. But there's a famine in the land, and uh, Elisha told the woman, he said, Go out, get out, praise God. Get out of this area. Get out, because there's a famine coming. It's going to last seven years. You see, he thought a lot of the woman. He wanted to get spare the woman. So he told her, told her, he said, take your son and y'all get out of this land because God is going to chastise this land. God is going to bring a famine upon these people. Why? Because the people had turned their backs on God. And this is where a lot of people are today in the society that we live in. They've turned their backs on God and then they wonder why everything is falling apart. They wonder why that they can't get along. They wonder why everything at their house, their children are on drugs. This, has, this is happening. That's happening. They're wondering why everything's falling apart. That Nothing they touch turns out right. There's a famine in the land. They've turned their backs on God. This country's turned its back on God. I preached that this morning, I think, on television. This country has turned its back on God. Our government has turned its back on God. And God is going to bring a famine upon the United States that the United States doesn't want to see. This country is being sold out by our government. It's being sold out. But let me tell you something. We serve a true and a living God. And that true and living God is going to pour His Spirit out in this last days. And He's going to show this country who's who. And the country, the government officials that are selling it out are going to bow down before God. They're going to bow down before God. Why? Because God is God. 
Jesus Christ is our Lord and our Savior. He shed his blood for the remission of our sins, and he is my Savior this morning. He's the one that thought enough of me to die on Calvary for me. But let me tell you something. He's still got a father. And his father's name is God Jehovah. And God Jehovah is still on the throne. It's God Jehovah that makes the decision. Jesus says, I can't even say, speak a word except I hear it from the father. I can do nothing of my own except my father tell me to do it. And church, we've let the God go out the back door. We've kicked him out the back door. And everybody's talking about Jesus. Jesus is our Lord and our Savior. He did pay the price, but he's still got a father, and his name is Jesus. His name is God, Jehovah, I should say. His name is God, and God is the one that we better be worshiping. God, we can't leave out of the Trinity. This is where the United States has gotten tied up and tangled up. It's all Jesus, and I'm not taking a thing away from my Lord and my Savior, but I'm also not going to discount God. Because God is the one that woke me up this morning. And it's through and by Jesus is seated at his right hand. Seated on his right hand. Because if God were to raise that right hand when I make him mad, I would disappear in a second. Jesus, if you read the Bible, he's sitting, sitting on the right hand of God.